Jim and Nick was all John and Nick and Michael Vargas. The average person who worked for Poundland gets paid ten thousand nine hundred and thirty seven pounds and three pence a year. That works out at less than a thousand pounds a month. Less than a couple of hundred pounds a week after tax. That's not very easy to survive on. It's not just that. Poundland also have people who are working just for their benefits. They're not getting paid at all. Do you know what that's called? It's otherwise known as slave labour, ladies and gentlemen, and Poundland are participating in this disgusting slave labour practice under threat of people losing their benefits. How does everyone feel about that? It sounds like they care for their profits. Thirty-four million pounds last year. That's a lot of money to make. Whilst uh, somebody's on sixty pounds a week benefit and has to work 40 of those hours learning the phenomenal skill of stacking shells. Foxconn are a Chinese manufacturing company. They produce the electronics goods for companies like Dell, Hewlett Packard, Sony, Nokia, Apple. And those, employ those Chinese employees of this factory were actually throwing themselves out of the windows to commit suicide because of the terrible working conditions, right? These people were getting paid and they were committing suicide. What do you think is going to happen eventually for the people who work in Poundland who don't get paid? It's also that they have disabled people working there for their benefits. The food money that they need to feed themselves, to clothe themselves, to look after themselves, they won't get it unless they do a month at Poundland stacking shelves for nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a public service announcement on behalf of the staff of Poundland. We encourage you and invite you to come out here and explain yourselves. Come out with your hands up. Oh, very interesting. Who else on this high street participates in slave labour, I wonder? Star, would you believe it? All the barracks employ slave labour. Oh yes. It's not just Poundland that have people on benefits working for nothing. Has anyone heard of an insurance policy known as the Dead Peasant Insurance Policy? It was an American insurance policy that was uh, taken out on behalf of certain employees of American companies. An offending company would be known as Walmart. And basically the dead person insurance policy entails if an employee that dies, that their name, if their name is taken out under this insurance policy, and if they die, the company themselves will receive millions of dollars because of their death and their family do not get a single penny. Oh, because it's Poundland, maybe it's another country. Maybe it's another country like China where we can look the other way whenever slave labour happens. We're actually here standing up for the people who work in Poundland to say that your wages are nowhere near enough. So we need to actually recognise that people are being abused economically and realise that we all need to work together a little bit. You know, there's a young lady who uh, is at university studying, I think it's archaeology and history. She was on a work placement at a museum, which is a good place if you're studying archaeology and history. But uh, she was told she had to give up that work placement to go and work for a month at Poundland, just to keep her benefits. That doesn't sound very positive for her career. It also doesn't sound like what Poundland needs. If they made £34 million last year, do they really need the government to pay their workers' salaries? That is probably why they're having to employ slave labour in Poundland. Because who would want to limit the profits that the CEOs get? Because one thing I heard from a gentleman earlier is that the kind of people who own Poundland and run Poundland are an American company that also own Vision Express. Maybe that's something we could all do a little bit of research into. 
you know what? I'm thinking about sort of forming my own plan there. Because I think if somebody wants some work experience, you can come and you can be my cleaner. You can come and uh, you can be my butler. And you can just do that and earn your benefits and get the experience of being a butler or a slave. Oh no, no, sorry, not slave. A butler or a cleaner. Come out here and say that slave labour has arrived in Britain. Get to Poundland. Get to your Holland and Barrett. Thank you. I would say employed, but uh, I think that's probably not, not factually correct. But who are doing work for Poundland for their benefit, uh, with no prospects of a, of a job afterwards. Uh, and there are a number of other companies who are doing the same as well. Okay. The central bank are basically the big, um, the big bank where everyone comes to get their money. It's a little bit different from the myth. I've been told by the very nice people that I'm not supposed to use any bad language. So please forgive me. Goldman Sachs, all the bankers that don't really have your best interests at heart. I'm sorry about the bad language. I'll behave myself now. Thank you. I don't really see why we need to move on just yet. I mean, it's cold, but it's not that cold. And I think people would like to know if they're supporting slave labour. And I'm sure that uh, if we're wrong, the people from Poundland would like to come out here and let us know exactly where we're wrong. We just want you to know so that you can make the choice that's right for you. Being proven that you're wrong is a signal that you are learning. It is a signal that you are evolving. We should stop holding on to the idea of, oh no, I've always got to be right. No, you will not learn if you do that. When we say about Poundland, we're talking about the corporate entity. Yes, I will say that again for brevity corporate entity known as Poundland, the corporation known as Poundland that is acting as the corporate slave master that it is. Anarchism, capitalism, socialism, communism, every other ism, they are all the same. They are all based in the monetary system. How about consumerism? You know, I see a lot of people with those shopping today. I see a lot of people thinking about things they might buy today. People, not sheeple. Remember the difference. <laughs> and maybe think to yourself, ah, actually, I've got my own brain. Maybe I should think with it. Instead of thinking, oh no, advertising, consumerism. If you won't nail his position to it, if you can't say my name is such and such yeah. and nobody here works for below the minimum wage, how can we believe it? Yeah, ridiculous. Yeah. Only ask for his name. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, that is right. Is that the oldest common law in this country? I believe it is. There, there's a difference between the Bill of Rights and Magna Carta, but uh, this, I think this is the original document, yeah. So does that mean that uh, if I don't cause loss, injury or harm to another person, uh, I'm not breaking any law? That is correct. That is absolutely correct. Uh, is it also correct that I don't have property of Her Majesty's government written on my body anywhere? Unless you have it tattooed or branded out on you at birth, then no. There is a certain language known as legal legalese. It is known as the language of the law society. It is, it is the language that is used by the employees and enforcement officers in our justice system. They are English words but they have very different meanings. So it's legalese, a little bit like Shakespeare. It sounds a little bit like English, but the words can have some funny meanings. Maybe this will give you some food for thought. The word register. Let that twirl around in your mind a little bit. The word register. Where do we normally encounter the word register in our day-to-day -day life? We have it in the legal system where we register our children at birth. We also have it 
in our automotive activities where we register our vehicle with the DVLA. However, there is one thing that we are not told. Whenever you register something, what it means in legal leave is it means that you are handing over title ownership of whatever you are registering with the corporation, well, to the corporation that you are registering it to. So if you think about it, when you register your car with the DDLA, what are you doing? You are handing over title ownership of your car to the DDLA. I will give you proof of this on your V5 document. Have a look at it. Are you, no, are you put down as the registered owner? No, you are not. Because you do not own your car after you register it. Instead, you are put down on the V5 document as the registered keeper. You are only keeping the car. You are, in a sense, a custodian of the automotive vehicle because it belongs to the DVLA. You handed it over to the DVLA when you registered it. Another example of register. When you register your child at birth. How many parents do we have here within earshot? Raise your hand. No one. All oh, right, this wouldn't affect you then. Um, basically, when you register your child's birth, it's the same thing applies with the DVLA situation. You are handing over title ownership of your child to the state. That is why social services have a legal right to take your children if they pertain that you are not looking after them. Do not believe the single word I'm saying. Instead, instead, look up this stuff for yourself. Look for the material yourself. Do your own research. Do your own thinking and arrive at your own decision as to what is true and what is false. What fair. Mm. Uh, there's an interesting use of the English language. It's fair if you work a week, you get paid for a week. That sounds fair to me. I think that sounds fair to most people. But actually, if you're a disabled person on benefits and your number comes up, you have to do a full working week for Poundman. For nothing. It's fair if you work a week, you get paid for a week. That sounds fair to me. I think that sounds fair to most people. But actually, if you're a disabled person on benefits and your number comes up, you have to do a full working week for Poundman. For nothing. Otherwise, the money that you spend on your food and your shelter gets taken away. And you have no choice about that. Now, does that sound fair? You know what, you get two or three of those people, there are people with proper jobs who won't have a job because that job's not there. It's being done by people for nothing. And that's no way to help self-respect. That's no way to help the economy. If anyone actually thinks this has any worth, then maybe you need to do some research. Because there is as much backing this and giving it value as if, as if it were a five pound note in Monopoly money. Because in order for a currency to have worth or value, it must be backed by an inherently valued commodity that it can be redeemable for. Like, I don't know, gold or silver? Wait a minute. Why is our currency called pound sterling? Why is it called pound sterling? Oh, that's right, because our currency was originally backed each unit was backed by a single pound in weight of sterling silver. Or maybe that's what our currency was originally valued with. But can you redeem our money in silver now? I'll tell you, I'll give you a crash course in exactly how the banking system works. It's called fractional reserve banking. Basically, whenever any loan or deposit happens in the banking system, around about nine times that amount, is created out of thin air. Out of thin air, on top. There's a 10% ratio that's basically reserved and uh, as, as a deposit, and then the rest of the 90% is considered excessive and is used as the basis for new loans. But that 90% doesn't stay with 
the original 10%. Instead, 90% is created out of thin air on top. For any of you who may be non-religious, if you believe in money, then you are a sheep for the biggest religion ever. Politician. Okay. You haven't tried you in the rest. Okay, and what we're talking about today is there's, there's workfare scheme in there today, and they've got people, disabled people, who are working for their benefits with no hope of a job. That's slavery. What I've got a well paid up, 30,000 a year. Oh, yeah, nice one, nice yeah. one. Long one. Do, you know, do you know how much they, you, you get paid if you're a disabled person who's stacking shelves in Panama? Yeah. Hot five. No. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not, pal. They get their benefits, and that's it. Oh yes, they do. Farmland employ people on their benefits. That's all they get. They don't get a wage. They just get their benefits. That sounds like slave labour to me. I'd like somebody from Farmland to come out here and tell us that that's not the case. And let me assure you, ladies and gentlemen, that happiness is not made in China. These free of charge things that can actually make you happy, that can actually contribute towards your psychological, emotional and physical well-being. And that is a hug. So, if you would like a free hug, please report to the crazy man on the megaphone. Thank you all.